Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to share some of the most valuable tips that I've picked up working with Midjourney as it relates to indie game dev. I'm going to cover some tips, some image remixing, using reference images, tiling, some tips for making icons, and we'll go over some settings. And I thought of a few more things while I was making this video, so hit that like button and let's get started. So the first thing I want to go over today is adding the Midjourney bot to your own Discord server. Now you can see this is my personal Discord server. It's called Malice in the Palace. And you can see that I've already invited the Midjourney bot to the server. If we jump over to the Midjourney Discord server, now you can see if I click on the Midjourney bot here, there's a button for add to server. If you click that, it'll let you add the Midjourney bot to any server that you have permissions for. So I only have the one right now. So you just click continue if you haven't added it already and that will add it. So that then you can have your own conversations with the Midjourney bot in your own channels. You could sort them by project or however you like it. I'm gonna start with just a simple prompt here um, so we can lead into the next part. I think I'll just make a really simple line art of Zelda. I really like the prompts with fine line art or the image that I used for the thumbnail for this video. I used fine pencil drawing. Those two are some of my favorites just for coming up with concepts. Well, I actually really like all of these, but let's expand one of them here and just take a closer look at it. Yeah, that looks really interesting. With that done, let's take a look at our next tip. So the next tip I want to look at is Remix. So if you type slash prefer Remix, it will toggle Remix on and off. Now, I already had it turned on, so I'm going to toggle it twice. And now, once you have that enabled, if you click for a variation, it will bring up the Remix prompt. So instead of just making a variation of one of the images you've already made, you can modify the prompt a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of text here just to add a furry companion. And let's see what it comes up with. So as you can see, very similar to the original uh, image that it produced, but uh, all the images have a furry companion. So let's just bring one of those out, just have a look at it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So for this next tip, I want to bring in a reference image. So I'm just going to paste an image into my channel here. This is an image that I already made with Midjourney a while ago. Now, if you click on the image and get it to expand up and then right click and copy the image address, now you can paste that address into your prompt. So if we put it in here as the first part of the prompt and then add a little bit of detail about whatever you want to have come out. So I'm going to add full body in the style of a multi-panel composition. Now that should give us some interesting results. So let's let that run here. All right, let's have a look. So these look pretty interesting. I kind of like the third one. They've all taken inspiration from the image that I uploaded there. I'm just going to upscale one of them. Now, I like this one, but you can see there's something kind of funny with the arm. It looks strange and the colors are a little bit dull. So I'm just going to bring it out to Photoshop quickly and add some vibrance, change the levels a little bit. I'll just bring the original back up here just to compare them. So you can see the style is very similar, though I added a few other words in the prompt that have resulted in, you know, the final image. But... This should give you an idea of how you can do it with just about any image you can think of. Okay, the next tip I want to have a look at is how to tile images. So for that, you just need the dash dash tile in your prompt, but I also found that including the words top down or top down view 
really helped to get that kind of image that I was looking for. So let's make up a couple here quickly and see what it comes up with. Okay, these look really interesting, especially this third one here that looks like a bunch of dice on a battlefield. Um, and the fourth one looks good too. Let's, uh, let's bring a few up here and just have a closer look. Yeah, well, that could generate some ideas for a game, I think. It's very interesting. I'm going to upscale this other one, too, that looks a little bit more like a battlefield that I'm thinking of. So we have a perfectly tileable image there. So that was a simple tip. Let's move on. The next thing I want to look at is making icons. So a lot of people find making icons with Midjourney can be tricky. What I find is including the word game icon, multiple styles, white background or some other kind of background, gray background maybe, and then dash dash no outline. And the reason for that is so that we can get a bunch of different styles or types of icons, of whatever you want to make, and then bring it into Photoshop and chop them up. Uh, and as you can see in a second here, I'm going to show you how to upscale these as well. So here we've got a bunch of, you know, reasonable Zelda style swords, I would say. And uh, I think we can work with that. So I'm just going to upscale one of them here. And then I'm going to save it to my desktop and I'm going to bring it into another AI powered website. So this site is called upscale.media and it lets you upscale any sort of image using AI up to four times bigger and it has lots of other features, but this is the one that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to upload my image to here and I'll set it to four X and I've sped this up just a little bit, but, uh, here we go. Now, if I mouse over the image, I'll be able to show you guys what the difference is. So you can kind of compare the before and after of, of what it's done to the image. And it comes out looking pretty nice. So, so this is a great way to make some icons for your game or just some placeholders. Now, just briefly here before I wrap this video up, I just want to take a look at settings quickly. If you type slash settings, it'll bring up most of the settings that you can set for the Mid Journey bot. Now, the one in particular I want to point out is Niji. If you turn on Niji instead of the regular Mid Journey version, you will get the anime version of Mid Journey. So if you feel like you want more of an anime style, switch to that one. Also, I just want to point out that you can toggle remix mode from here too, instead of the command that I showed previously. I've thought of a few more tips, so I'm going to make a part two to this video. If you're interested in that, please subscribe to the channel. If you have any specific questions that you'd like me to address, please add them to the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, smash that like button.